Welcome to Akhand Vidyashram, the first institute of impeccable wisdom. Nernest equations, the ideal log of equilibrium potential is the subject of discussion here. Devian, the walking talking encyclopedia is going to help us to understand concept very clearly. My mission, as you know, is the impeccable wisdom. Let Akhand Vidyashram talk of only impeccable wisdom, focus only on core values with a mathematical precision, knowing which everything is fully known, and that is impeccable wisdom. And I'm glad my greatest discovery is Devian, the divine design of nature with which the perfect objects are designed and created, and this has been recognized, conceived, and revealed for the first time in the world. And Devyank is the result of 60 years of integrated education. It's just not 10, 20, 30 years. My journey of looking for impeccable wisdom started as a small child. And desire to find, I think I'm able to come to this stage over a period by eliminating this is not perfect, this is not perfect, and this could be perfect. And I'm glad I will. my journey has been very, very successful. Akhand Rishi, this picture I have shown earlier also, and this is also part of Katha Upanishad as well as Gita Upadesh. And Katha Upadesh or Katha Upanishad, Gita Upadesh talks of the two souls within the body. And this particular description is from Katha Upanishad as well as Gita Upadesh is the chariot represents the human body as Jeevatma. I am sure. Now let me emphasize. Chariot represents physical structure called Jeevatma, human body, of matter as we know. Five horses represent the five senses, five indriya, with which we perceive the external world, whether eyes, ears, nose, tongue, and skin. And ten rings represent the mind. Manas, which gives us emotional and other knowledge about the world. Seeing is one, but understanding is more important. Philosophical thought process is associated with mind, which could be emotional, philosophical, otherwise. Then go to the next stage of filtration to call intellect or buddhi, which is more scientific knowledge. Like in Panchakosha, we talk to Anime Kosh, to Pranime Kosh, to Manome Kosh is mind. Then Vigyanme Kosh is where buddhi and intellect is associated. And then Anandame Kosh, where intuition or wisdom, which leads to Satchit Anand, blissful state, is what Panchakoshas are all good. Five senses, five sheets. This particular picture is very clear. To make things very clear, Katha Upanishad, in my opinion, one Atma which enjoys all the fruits of the body is Antar Atma, or helium for the human soul, which comes from the sun. And this is represented in this picture in the form of Arjun, who was in tune with Antar Atma. As a result, his concentration, contemplation was of the greatest, and he was a great warrior, great archer, because he could bring whole mind, buddhi, intellect, with a soul consciousness of his own self, he could do wonders. And I'm sure all of us, in whom self-realization takes place, they would be able to have very integrated approach toward everything, and they would have the knowledge of Everything in an impeccable wisdom, perfect. The second soul which Katha Upanishad is talking about is Lord Krishna, who represents divine soul or Paramatma. I am glad to put at this particular juncture once again, Gita, Lord Krishna talks about it. He is also Purusha and he is also Purushatmatma and Mahanatma. That means he represents Jeevatma. Antaratma as a Paramatma, all the three. And I'm glad to put, I have been able to bring a new terminology talking of the three concept of three soul manifestation, Jivatma, Antaratma, Paramatma as a Tret Paravidya or Treta philosophy, which is 
slightly improvised over Dvet philosophy and Advait philosophy. Let's not go into detail of that. It's just that how our mind is quite capable of concentration, contemplation, and bring the wisdom out through understanding itself. And that is what empirical wisdom is. I'm just giving example that we can do wonders, and that's how we move on. So let's go to the next slide. Five indriya, five senses are the sense organs. But the information from sense organs is carried by nerves or neuron cells to the central nervous system of the spinal cord as well as brain, which we have spoken in the last one. And each neuron is made of 10 stages, is also something which I am trying to emphasize in nature. We have to keep every stage, there are going to be 10 stages, is a mandatory, whether in structural part or functional part. And indriya are neuron cells which carry the information. Actually, there are 100 billion neuron cells which are structural and functional units of the nervous system. And each neur neuron cell can make 20,000 memory synapses. Imagine the kind of power we have. If we can keep all the things correct through concentration control without disuse and misuse. Unfortunately, majority of the most successful people hardly use 6%. Imagine if you can use 100% by knowing all the different arts and sciences and you have the kind of memory you have. I'm sure all of us could become walking, talking encyclopedias like what I'm trying to talk about. Now from that, what are 10 stages where dendrites are as a receptor of, from sense organs and how the information to sense is carried to the next neuron or ascending tract or descending tract Ascending track, we have already spoken about it with the spush. Descending, we will talk a little later. But this particular bridge between sense organs and the central nervous system in neuron and indriya, which horses also represent, and the rein also control, and then understand what happens in this particular process is something let us discuss. Now, cells can be in a rest of state or in action. At this particular juncture, let's not go to the action potential or local potential. Let's talk of equilibrium potential, a resting membrane potential when cell is at rest. Okay. And what is equilibrium potential? The combined action potential or transport of ions across the cell membrane in a resting state results in state of. That means rest of the state when it's in action, Equilibrium is not there. It could be either more outside or more inside. Because of difference, there is exchange which is taking place. That's where the first law of nature is. The concentration of movement from higher concentration to the lower is the first law of nature. And we will talk about it as we go to the next video. But when it is resting, it is this. When it's a resting state, it maintains osmolarity. Osmolarity means osmotically active particles. And that means osmotically active particles are like your sodium, potassium, calcium, anions, cations like chloride, bicarbonate, those things which are the ones which keep exchanging, which maintain the osmolarity. When osmolarity is maintained, we can prevent the changes in the cell volume because when water content is less in a dehydrated state, the cells become shrink, a small. When the more water goes, it becomes hydrated, overhydrated, size could increase, and at certain stage, they might even break. We are going to take that example also at a later stage when we talk of osmolarity per se. Now, in a resting state, the electrical charge inside the cell is negative, and electrical charge outside the cell is positive and is calculated by following the Ernest equation. In this particular formula, only thing which I would like you to highlight here is 61 number. What exactly 61 number means? Unfortunately, no research scientists, authors talk about why log of 61 minus 61 has been used. And I know Instead of using a log of 961, it should have been 61.8034. And this also gave me the idea, perhaps 
this is a water content which is responsible for the solution inside the cell and outside which is calculated because it's constant water is change does not change that amount should remain whereas sodium potassium ion concentration can change as resulting in equilibrium or action potential so this also i do feel ke instead of talking a 60% water 70% part i think this particular equation says well water content ideal could be around 61 and i say 61.803 is perfect and i think i'm much much closer to the truth in this particular thing helping me also to put across if they got a 61 6.8 is much better as a result we could have a perfect equilibrium potential and c o and c i is a concentration of ions outside divided by concentration inside and using this formula you are going to get the action potential for equilibrium potential or action potential or local potential calculation now let's talk of some most important term with respect to equilibrium potential the resting membrane potential as i told you resting membrane charge inside is negative and charge outside is positive and right on the picture you can see in skeletal muscles resting membrane potential in millivolts is minus 90 in skeletal muscles in neurons is minus 70 smooth muscle is minus 60 photoreceptor cell is minus 40 erythrocytes are rbc it is minus 8.4 and chondrocytes it is minus 84 now from that point of view let's say this is resting membrane potential and it is negative because negative charge inside and positive also in the picture in the middle also shows in depolarized state the positive ions inside in resting membrane you can see the negative so i think very clear this is what it is now picture on the right side we have put minus 70 which is resting membrane potential which goes a straight line when they are putting a stimulus there when you put a stimulus sodium ions go through ordinary channels as a result there is very small decline but very moment it reaches minus 55 there is depolarization sodium enters fully there is a few fast dynamic but it stops at plus 35 doesn't go beyond why because there is super saturated solution more no more sodium can go inside as a result it stop and after that potassium starts coming out which leads to depolarization then with the help of sodium potassium pump this particular picture is not my picture it just give you an idea in next stage i will uh, bring my own picture my own concept show how exactly it happens which is different from what scientists have been putting across to make a real sense in a scientific way step by step but i am giving showing you sodium potassium pump the so three for every exchange of three sodium from inside only two can go as a result repolarization takes place but because of entire sodium coming out and potassium going it can go to hyperpolarization that mean it's more than resting membrane potential then sodium has to get in again to restore to the resting stage we will discuss that in detail with the more evidence in the next particular video now at this juncture i would like to bring on record an interesting and lightning dialogue with my students and myself let's say a student asked a very innocent question during my one of my classes in physiology department sir are red blood cells living cells everybody was surprised the boy is normally not known to raise questions but in my class he raises a question and expects an immediate answer the quest and very moment for the first time i asked i heard somebody ask me the question are red blood cells living cells and i'm sure anyone who for the first time is asked this question even a best of medical doctor even hematologist would say yes red cells are living cells why because they give doing all the functions of living cells they are performing much better but intuitively i gave the answer 
red cells are not living cells. And then a dialogue started between me and that student and other students. The question student asked, why they are not living cells? The first thought came from one of the students and said, sir, is it because of, there's no nucleus? I said, that could be one or part, but at this particular juncture, I like to explain, living cells can reproduce new cells, where a red blood cells cannot reproduce new cells. And living cells, main characteristic is reproduction or procreation. This particular cell does not have that, so quote in quote cannot be called living cell, but it's a functionally otherwise a good cell, leave it at that. Then immediately a question came in my own mind, it intuitive questions. Neuron cells have a nucleus, but they do not reproduce. Why? So the right was well, let's have a dialogue. Now that you talk, brought the question of nucleus, now let's talk about nucleus. Neurons have, because we are talking about the indriya, neuron cells, that's why this particular question is, this dialogue is coming up. I thought it's the right time to share, to put across that in neuron cells, it's the centrosome is missing. And centrosome is the one which splits into two to form two centrioles at the first stage of creation. As a result, 21 parts of the living cell become 22 parts. And as a result, we call it Brahman's first stage of creation is equal to 22 by 20. It's one of the best examples for in favor of Brahman, the first stage of creation equivalent to 22 by 21. This is beautiful example. So I'm sure now very clear, living cells have centrosome, which divides into two centrioles and poor creation comes very clear. But at this particular juncture, also dialogue did not stop with that alone. The question came, nucleus is removed, why? So I said, nucleus is removed primarily to accommodate hemoglobin. And according to Devyank, no cell can have more than 38.196% of solid matter. And hemoglobin itself is 35%. So there is space for nucleus and other things. So as a result, nucleus was removed, we cannot be accommodated because there is no space. Because remaining 61.8034% has to be retained for water. You cannot replace that, otherwise cell will not function. But mitochondria is also removed from the red blood cells. The reason being very simple, RBCs are designed to carry oxygen for the consumption of rest of cells. Imagine a lorry carrying uh, apples from Kashmir to Kanyakumari and the driver and the <laughs> conductor go on eating those uh, apples on the way. What will be delivered in Kanyakumari? Similarly, if the red blood cells itself start consuming oxygen from lungs, what will they deliver in that? I thought that was quite interesting uh, concept. Anyway, other organs are also removed as a result. Red blood cells can live only for 120 days. And it's very interesting to say, red blood cells are formed in 21 days and live for 120 days and do not use oxygen and they do not uh, produce uh, energy for their own consumption. And they are also designed with the wing. I think this particular concept, one by one, I thought it was very, very interesting to share okay, how divine design actually works and how nature works and what if we are into the nature, we raise questions and then concentrate and contemplate on every aspect of the knowledge in the light of mathematical designs. I think uh, we'll be, have a much better understanding of nature and then no confusion thereafter. So now, the carry home message for this particular video is, Nernest equation uses a log of 61. It should have been log of 61.8034 to get perfect equilibrium potential. Second thing is, I'm happy that I'm able to bring across that a log actually represents concentration of water intuitively otherwise, not anything else. This is also for a new addition to the knowledge for the sake of the world because no scientist or research scholar or 
author of a, any other books from school, college to university actually has put on record that log represents water content. And it is a water content of 61.80, which is responsible for movement of sodium and potassium or ions, maybe calcium also, extracellular to inside, inside to outside, and to maintain that either in resting membrane pressure, action potential, or local potential. I think understanding this particular, if you carry only these two particular points from this particular video, okay, ideal log should be 61.8034, and it is water. I think that itself, my, these two additional information, I'm happy that I've been put, able to put together vehemently and say, this is the kind of knowledge which we need, which would be interesting for the student. And I'm sure if we have that, we'll never forget for the rest of our life. And that is the idea with which I'm making this video to bring those core values which have not been spoken about. I do not want to replicate the same thing which is found in books in school, college, and universities. What is not found, knowing which everything else is fully known, let's talk of that as an empirical system. And I'm sure this particular video is a very thought-provoking thing, not only for students, for research scholars. I'm even, I'm sure even leading journals of the world should really take note of it. This is what it is. Anyway, I'm happy doing whatever I'm doing. With that, I think let's come to the end. And thank you all for kind listening and encouraging me to more, produce more and more of such wisdom so that we can be enlightened at the same time. And I'm glad that I'm able to do it in my own way. And thank you very much. It has been lovely talking to you.